So here we have the first ever allophone that was made. And, um, and so you can see that it has this beautiful um, shape to it. It's very wonderful just to, to draw your hand over um, each of these bells. And all the bells are made of aluminium. So the instrument actually is quite light. Um, but the sound can vary enormously. And so, for example, if I use very hard plastic sticks, we get this very, very sharp percussive sound indeed. And the fascinating thing is the, the resonance of it. So it's almost like a, a vibraphone, tubular bells, very kind of gamelany like as well. However, if I use much softer sticks, it, it's, it becomes really quite ethereal. And the dynamic range is huge. It really is very huge indeed. And I can actually also use a bow if I want. And so. There's all sorts of things that could be done, but I just find it really interesting that you can play with the resonance and really use the room well. So you can play it quite conventionally or get a lot of sort of interesting otherworldly sounds from it. Well, here we have an enormous marimba and uh, the difference between this marimba and what we call the concert western marimba is actually the height of it first of all and I really do have to sit down to play this particular instrument but it's also about maybe 10, 11, 12 feet long and uh, so you can actually line up maybe three players or so just to, to, to get from one end to the other and that's quite a common thing to happen. So this is an African marimba that is called an Amadin the mallets that I have here are actually made of leather and glued together with some sort of rosin or other. So they're really quite raw, quite heavy to hold, but the, the actual sound is, is pretty extraordinary. Well, this instrument is called a brimbulum, and uh, I was inspired to sort of make this instrument after being on my brother's farm. And he had this um, uh, farming machine, and it had prongs that seemed to stick out of it, almost like a huge cat's whiskers. And, uh, and I just sort of struck one of the, the, the prongs that were, were sticking out, and it made an incredible sensation. And it got me thinking that perhaps I could uh, maybe make something, uh, you know, of a, a similar thing, but obviously in a much smaller scale. So I had a friend of mine just create this little resonator type of box. And, uh, and I found these prongs. And so basically you can alter, you know, the length of the prong. So I can, you know, move this further out or bring it further in. It just depends. And you can put it on a higher stand and so on. But it has a, an extraordinary, almost electronic sound to it.
And because I was very intrigued by the prongs going horizontally, um, equally we have instruments whereby the prongs are vertical. And uh, this is a very crude version of an instrument called a water phone. And this was used by a lot of film composers um, back in the early part of the um, 20th century. And what happens is that I just pop a little bit of water in the funnel and all of the prongs are of uh, different lengths. And, uh, and you know, you get different types of water phones, so some very large ones, which are called whalers, um, some uh, which are much smaller, and some that have almost like a wonderful velvety type of sound, and others that are much more screechy and, and threatening almost. So they do, uh, you know, really produce all different types of, of sound colours. So this is a relatively small water phone. I'm amazed how really you can create an instrument out of anything. And, uh, and when I discovered a, a gentleman over in the United States of America um, who had developed an instrument made out of um, old spanners and wrenches, you know, I couldn't believe that this was possible. And these were just things that he had collected over many years and found that they each created a different pitch. And uh, so, lo and behold, again, I sort of asked, well, could he create a more structured instrument for me? And that's exactly what we did. We, he did. And uh, so we've ended up with a, a wrench a phone. So this is how it sounds. So this is the second version of the batonka, and as you can see, the, the tubes are made of um, PVC, and uh, we have two octaves from C to C, and uh, but it, <laughs> it is almost sort of quite alien looking, quite um, outer spacey looking, and which I love because um, for a lot of the pieces that I have commissioned, I'm always thinking about the theatrical element. So um, the first version is much more straight up and down, but this one, the, the instrument maker decided to um, really accentuate the, the, the sound by almost, you know, where the audience can almost feel the sound coming out of the pipe. So it, it is quite interesting. And these are very kind of crudely made, homemade sticks made out of um, uh, old mouse mats, I think, I can't remember. But anyway, so it's a great instrument to play and something that anyone can immediately get uh, a sound from.
Well, I'm standing in front of a very large tam-tam. This is about 60 inches, which is really quite huge. And you think that, well, heavens, if it's so large, then it's going to make an enormous sound. But this is a, a wonderful example whereby an instrument can produce a, dy a dynamic that is so broad, you know, that breadth of dynamics, almost like being underwater. And it's quite an unbelievable sensation, truly a, a feeling that, that just resonates throughout the whole body. And uh, obviously I can use all different types of mallets and, and tools on this instrument, but the original stick I have, which is a huge woolly mallet, probably the largest stick I, I actually have in my collection, really gives us this absolutely extraordinary underwater sensation.